Hi, this is Tony at Cover Magazine. I'm speaking to Zaid Rasso, the CTO or Head of Technical at MyGlass. Zaid, thank you very much for talking to me. Hey, Tony, thank you so much for having me, man. Pleasure to be here. Brilliant. Um, we obviously starting off with the first question, asking you about uh, the technology that is driving MyGlass. Maybe you can give us a little bit of an overview, especially when it comes to delivery and installation technology. Yeah, so I mean, that's um, that's a pretty broad question, Tony, but uh, to, to try and uh, give you a breakdown, um, before we even get into technology, uh, just understanding business need and understanding the industry is yeah. is where, where we've got to get, get going. Um, and when it comes to claim submission and, and the documentation around that is, and, and the installation and management around this entire process, man, glass isn't easy. Let's, let's start there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's something that um, we've, we've sort of learned over the years. And, and when, we, when we kicked off tech in a big way in, in 2017, we had to learn very fast. Um, so some of the points I'd, I'd maybe want to put out there is uh, that claim submission process before we even get into uh, the actual client installation. Man, that's something we've really adopted fundamentally as part of our MGB solution, or we, we've got our own border road solution that we've developed in house. And that uh, submission process caters for sort of uh, elements where we, we mitigate fraud uh, within within our network and, and within insurance companies it it, it, it allows, uh, has a really uh, fundamental component around security um, and then we systematically keep a full transaction history of everything that happens every time someone logs in every time someone uh, sends a message every time someone approves something every time someone logs something we systematically keep a track of everything that goes on with, within our solution. If you have to get to the, the actual installation at a client, um, and that's something that, that's been a recent ad enhancement on our side, and, and we've started focusing um, on, on this brand, uh, and, and Gary calls it, we got you, and it's something that, that uh, Gary has brought in uh, within the organization, and we've adopted that fully right down to client level and, and, and we take tech to drive that with client base. Um, and we've basically almost abolished all paperwork uh, within MyGlass because of that. So so uh, uh, an inspection at a client now happens on a mobile device um, and that mobile device drives an interaction with the client. Uh, so when we go out for, for fitment, uh, we do a pre-inspection at client uh, with photos, uh, with with the full list of of, uh, of questions that we survey the vehicle on, uh, that tool uh, assists our our fitters to ensure that they have the correct stock on hand, um, the correct molding if they need it, the the, the co correct um, uh, uh, resin, and uh, then we conduct uh, the actual fitment, and that gets captured. Uh, in in digital terms uh, and post that we do a post inspection client gets to sign on on device and the client is kept in the loop throughout the entire process uh, via uh, sms's all the way from contact to to um, installation and post installation the client gets a pdf copy of that entire pre and post inspection uh, and gets the opportunity to rate our service um, yeah, uh, technology plays a really, really fundamental part in our organization. So, I mean, uh, you sort of described quite a complex process there. Where do you start when you develop a platform used by multiple stakeholders and um, with many v different diverse needs and use cases? <laughs> That's a very good question. So, so whenever you have multiple stakeholders, the the needs are definitely diverse, right? Um, and point one is just to identify those stakeholders because uh, uh, sometimes people believe they are a stakeholder, um, um, and they're actually part part of the process, not necessarily a, a stakeholder in that process. Identifying those stakeholders is is one of the most difficult components out there, 
and then trying to run a user centric approach so that user research becomes a, a massive part of that 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 process to understand um, the needs, the goals, the pain points of of, of people that's actually going to utilize these solutions and systems. Um, and that can be various means of, of doing it. We, we were blessed. Um, we we uh, most stakeholders uh, were all in the same city, so we were able to get together and, and sort of structure this. Uh, and then when there's a diverse set of stakeholders, user personas come in, into play, right? Um, yeah. And and oh man, that's a really difficult thing to manage because it doesn't matter how great the tech is, everyone has a different way in which it makes them feel. Um, and understanding those feelings and and driving that back into a user experience uh, is a very difficult process. So so I'd say to start this. Uh, identifying those stakeholders, uh, understanding them, and then creating out those user journeys before we even start wireframe, wireframing or prototyping or or developing. Uh, and then mm -hmm. the way we we keep it going, Tony, is iteratively. Uh, and Gary will tell you that it's a uh, or anyone at my boss will tell you that it's 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 a, a pain point, I suppose. Uh, but but we've got to iteratively develop and release because you're continuously learning, man. This industry is changing so often and as you learn you, you got to adapt to it uh, and that's what makes us so powerful having a, a in-house uh, dev team that's available we can iteratively design and develop and, and release yeah. yeah i mean you you've sort of answered my second question as well but during your your answer something came up to me in terms of the users um how, how do you how do you train them how do you um make sure that you know, because you've got such diverse users of your your system, how do you um, keep them all up to date with um, what is the developments on the system and how they should be using everything? So, so with a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so ultimately, right? I, I, I mean, um, I think Steve Jobs said it right. If you need a user manual to use a system then the system is not doing its job. You know, if you need to use a manual to mm -hmm. use a phone, that, that phone hasn't been designed right. And, yeah. and we sort of take that to heart, right? And and um, we and we know when we say diverse, I mean, we, we are diverse, different languages, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, uh, age groups. Uh, you, you, you get people that's been working their entire life, staying away from, from a computer. And now you're telling them, you don't only have to be on a computer, you've got to be on a on a mobile device when you get to, to a client and and you've got to submit everything digitally um man the 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 continuous communication is 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 how we drive it uh, and we handle that between technical and head office first uh, and then send that out to to the network uh, when it comes to external users and these are uh, insurance users or or, or brokers uh, or even the the client themselves uh, where our portal allows for, for certain people to go see updates on, on where things are. Um, that there, we, we just drive by ensuring that we have a very user-friendly solution. So, so the system actually guides you. Um, you shouldn't get lost in that process. And, and where you do get lost, we've got live chat channels. So you can live chat a, a support person or, or someone at, 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 at the, in the technical team and, and they'll get on and help you. So it's, a, it's pretty much an ecosystem, Tony. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, like most tech environments, you know, it's one thing leads to the other and everybody depends on each other, etc. Um, but I totally agree with you um, about, uh, you know, the system should be so intuitive that um, anybody can pick it up very quickly. Definitely. So thank you so much for chatting to me and enlightening me a bit about the processes and the technology behind my glass. Um, sounds like you've got it pretty much under control. Yeah, Tony, you you most welcome, man. And thanks so much for having us. Uh, and yeah, having it under control is relative, um, but we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, I think Mario Andretti was uh, the racing driver. He was the one that said, um, if you are in control, you're not going fast enough. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I think with business, that's how it works, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay.
Great, guys. Thank you so much.